Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you today to share a brief update on the amazing journey we at Johnson & Johnson are on uh, from a technology transformation perspective. I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about Johnson & Johnson, our operating model, and some of the market forces that uh, we live with every day. So the Johnson & Johnson brand is world-renowned. People associate it with things like Band-Aids, Tylenol, Johnson's uh, baby shampoo, but we are so much more than that. We are the sixth largest consumer health company and pharmaceutical and uh, bioinformatics company as well, uh, manufacturing drugs in critical uh, ca cases where, uh, like cancer, diabetes, et cetera. We're also the world's largest medical device manufacturer and device company. In terms of our operating model, we're over 270 operating companies that operate in 60 countries across the globe. So truly a global company. From an operating model perspective, it's a highly decentralized model. Many of these companies uh, would be rated as small to mid-sized companies uh, that operate under the J&J umbrella. Many of them were through acquisitions. I would say upwards close to 50% came through acquisition, M&A activity. And again, it is through a highly decentralized operating model that we operate in, where there is a lot of autonomy that is given to the co local companies to innovate within the healthcare space. And lastly, when you look at the market forces that we live in today, healthcare reform has changed the game for everyone. With a drive for efficiency and transparency, it's not only impacting our customers, but it's impacting us as well, uh, where there's more focus on more discussions on value more discussions on transparency, more discussions on what should be on formulary, what shouldn't be on formulary. It's really changing the, the face and the pace and the need for crisp analytics and data. Then you have market disruptors. Today, more than ever, the barriers to entry are lower than they've ever been. All it takes is cloud, mobile, digital devices. And this is particularly, particularly true in emerging markets where J&J has a huge opportunity from a revenue growth perspective. But what worked years ago in those markets from a cost perspective and a technology footprint won't work today. So we need to take a very different view of how to operate and deliver technology in those places. So before I talk about where our journey and where we are, I think it's instructive to talk about where we've come from. So like any large global enterprise uh, that has grown through acquisition, that has a decentralized model, we have a heterogeneous distributed infrastructure of technology across the globe. It's one that's highly, phys was that highly physical in nature, where low levels of virtualization existed. Provisioning was measured in weeks versus minutes, let alone that. Uh, low utilization, so we had over-provisioning going on because people wanted to get, since they wanted to get their swing at the bat to make sure they were provisioned on time. Low financial transparency due to the fact that much of this is a capital intensive environment. And a high degree of friction in terms of exit and entry. And if you think about many of the small companies, they need that ability to experiment and get in and get out quickly, which with a capital intensive environment and highly physical was not really easy to do. So our business partners were asking us for something different, quite frankly, better, faster, cheaper. So about a year ago, we embarked on laying out a new strategy. You know, in our first, our first swing at that, we weren't bold enough. It was incremental. Yes, we were going to virtualize more to compute level. We were going to lower our technical debt we're going to do some process improvements. And we just realized it wasn't bold enough. So we took a step back, and indeed bold we are. We're going all in on a hybrid cloud strategy for J&J. &J. Part of that being an on-premise cloud environment, which we're in the midst of rolling out across the globe as we speak. We partnered with Amazon as well for a virtual private cloud and public cloud capabilities. 
And we're on this journey now where it's all about collapsing the infrastructure, automating as much as we can, creating seamless interoperability with the data centers. I like to refer to the hybrid cloud as the borderless data center. And I think increasingly that's a model all of us large enterprises are going to face as a reality where it's not going to be clear where the data center begins and ends. But what's going to be important is to maintain that operational control and visibility. It's something I focus on quite a bit. And with that, we're looking for fine-grained controls in terms of elasticity to enter and exit out of these uh, environments. And where we can, we'll leverage SaaS and PaaS. So we've, we've partnered with Amazon, again, on our VPC environment. And today, we have approximately 120 application workloads running in that environment. And over the next year, we expect to, to triple that easily. And as things like GXP compliance come along, which we, working with Amazon and others, are a voice and strong advocate for that to become a reality, that will also open up new opportunities for us in life sciences. So one area is application. The other areas where we're focusing on, uh, one is big data, which we've been at that for a while now and pretty, pretty far along, and the other is on the desktop. And I'll talk briefly about both of those. In the big data space, we have worked with Amazon and the various tools that they offer to provide this big data simplified architecture patterns. And what the focus is on here is minimi minimizing the time to insight, less about gathering the data, less about provisioning. How do we get to the insights quickly? And we've had remarkable success thus far in taking structured, unstructured data taking streams of data from our supply chain to create value and insights in a more rapid fashion. And we've done it in areas like physician compliance. We've done it in our supply chain area where we're taking real-time feeds from the manufacturing line to measure quality and efficiency. In the bioinformatics space, we're looking how to leverage the elastic compute capability of Amazon to do high, highly intensive compute operations, merging of data in complex models. Additionally, we're looking how, how we can analyze our current biologics or medicines that we have to create new medicines. And having this ability to churn to the data and spin it up and spin it down has really been uh, an amazing benefit to us, and it's just growing, growing every day. Now lastly, we'll talk about desktop and workspaces. This is really our, our next venture here with, with AWS, and one where really, really excited about. Uh, it's one that we've had a large influence on, I believe, and, and AWS has been amazingly responsive to putting our security needs in place and our operational needs in place into the product. And so our strategy here is to bring the power of the cloud to the desktop, to decouple the physical device from the operating system, such that we can create more efficiency in how we provision, how we do patches, how we do M&A activity, how we promote self-service and BYOD. Our initial use cases are going to be for contractors and employees. Today, we issue thousands of laptops to contractors who work for J&J at a significant capital cost. This changes that dynamics. It also helps us with level two support. So we're, we're really, really excited about this opportunity. Uh, we'll also use it in a zero desktop footprint space for where there are shared workspace environments or people who are, work or office workers. Our plan is to roll it out to over 25,000 desktops in 2015. So again, we're really excited about it. The economics are there. We're getting tremendous feedback from our users on not only usability but performance around the globe. So the user interest and demand is there. The time is right. And we're really excited about doing that. And this was just a brief update of the various areas that we were working with AWS. And I have to say, it's been a great experience for us as an enterprise customer work with AWS. They challenge us, we challenge them, and they deliver. Thank you very much.